back. Tom Hartman here with you. On the line with us is Dr. Ben Strauss, uh, President, CEO, and Chief Scientist at Climate Central. ClimateCentral.org is the website. You can tweet him at Ben underscore Strauss. Uh, Dr. Strauss, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining us. So, uh, 340 to 8, 480 million people. Basically, you guys have come up with, or this, this uh, new estimate was published in Nature Communications, uh, efforts to re refine NASA's satellite elevation data, found that the number of people who will be at risk from global sea rise change as a consequence of global climate change uh, is tripled now from, estimate, from previous estimates. Do I have that right? Uh, yes, you do. You want to elaborate on it? Uh, well, so the really almost the whole climate science enterprise has been focused on uh, how sea levels will change in the future. And rightly so, that's hard to get. Uh, it's, it's the ball that's moving and uh, really impossible ultimately to predict with precision. But you need to know two different things to understand how many people are going to be at risk. The height of the future sea, but also the height of the land. And I think we all tend to assume that we know the height of the land, but it turns out that we don't know that so well for large parts of the planet. Hmm. And past research that has done global assessments or assessments in many developing countries has relied on some elevation data from NASA collected by satellites, which provides what is called surface elevation data, meaning you, you get the height of the surface of the earth that's closest to the sky, which includes treetops and rooftops. So on average, those elevations are really uh, well above the true elevation of the ground. And the true elevation of the ground is what you need if you want to understand the risk from sea level rise and coastal flooding. And our contribution was to develop using machine learning or a, a form of artificial intelligence, a new elevation data, data set for coastal areas worldwide that essentially eliminated this average error found in the NASA data. And we discovered a great deal more people are living on uh, vulnerable land than uh, we previously understood. Remarkable. So our coasts are actually lower than we thought they were, or the land around them is lower than we thought they were. Um, it's remarkable. They, now, this is just basically, you know, the sea comes up and it, and it invades the land, essentially. And as we're seeing in Venice right now and in Miami Beach, um, and, you know, people, people can no longer live there and they have to flee and all that sort of thing. But the, that's happening as a consequence of melting ice. And a lot of the ice that's melting is in glaciers around the world, which feed some of the world's largest rivers. What's going to happen when these glaciers finally melt? Well, I'd say the... Um biggest area of concern is in uh, is looking at the Himalayas mm -hmm. and the rivers that they feed uh, help to provide irrigation water and drinking water for uh, probably well over a billion people in, in South uh, and Southeast Asia. So as those glaciers melt, we will probably see a period where the water supply actually increases because you know, every year you have a, a freezing and snowing period and a melting period. But uh, if the glaciers are stable, it means that on average you have the same amount of, uh, of melt as you have snowfall. But if the glaciers are melting, you're adding that melt to that to the balanced equation. So there will be a period where water seems to be plentiful, but it will be followed up in the farther future by a period where the water supply is much less regular. There's a risk that people become used to having more water and then suddenly uh, the water becomes quite unreliable as those glaciers dry up and then you're really subject to the whims of the weather each year. Was it a big snow year or a, a low snow year? And that, um, that could be extremely uh, dangerous. And then on top of that, as a consequence of global climate change, we find that precipitation events and wind events are becoming more extreme. So some parts of our country, some parts of the world are now experiencing as 
regular events, what used to be considered 100-year or 500-year floods, and other parts of our country are now experiencing as regular events, and, and of the world, as regular events, um, what used to be, you know, 100-year or 500-year droughts um, are, are happening for extended periods of time. We, you know, the west coast of the United States is in, you know, five-year drought now. Um, uh, Guatemala is, 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 I believe, the sixth year of a very, very severe drought, a, a multi-hundred year drought, and, and it's one of the things that's driving some of the refugees coming to the United States. Um, sh I, I'm assuming that that also is going to affect probably hundreds of millions, if not billions of people. Do we have any collective estimate of the number of people worldwide who are affected by global climate change integrating all these different effects? Well, I think if one simple answer is that we're all affected by global climate change in different degrees in different places, but really? uh, there, there, there's no place that is unaffected. We've simply changed the atmosphere and the climate for the whole planet where all of us live. Uh, you're also right to highlight that we will feel and we are feeling climate change most strongly in the extremes. And increasingly, we are able to detect a climate signal in specific individual extreme events. I should note that it's, I, I think the jury is still very much out in terms of uh, Central American, uh, the, the drought in Central America uh, right now. I, I, I recently um, saw some research suggesting that it was within the range of natural variability. I don't know whether an assessment has been done there, a formal assessment or not yet, and, and, and what that will show. But overall, uh, we are definitely seeing an increase in extreme weather because of climate change. And even small changes in average temperature or average conditions can lead to large changes in the likelihood or frequency of extremes. I, I sometimes think of it, um, imagine standing on, on the beach, uh, perhaps as the tide is coming in and watching the waves wash up the beach towards your uh, toes. And Im imagine every wave coming very close, an inch away, two inches away, but you never get wet. Wave after wave. Well, all you need is just a few inches of the tide coming in or a few inches of sea level rise and suddenly you'd be getting wet with every single wave. So you, you can go from a situation where um, the events when you're affected or the extreme events are very rare to ones, uh, to a situation where they're very common, even by just a small change in the average. And that's really something we're seeing all around the world today. 